this is where it's gonna be. Hopefully.本当にこう日本って自然が美しい、緑が美しい国なんですね。で、そこにあのま多くの家が建ってるんですけど、あの新しい家ってその土地の良さを無視した家があの多く建ってます。で、我々はちょっとそういう家作りはしたくないなってい
from what I'm told. <laughs> okay. I've never seen the house at night though, so this is kind of a, a big moment for me because I have been to the model house at night and that is certainly better looking at night, just the way that the, the light works. So I'm, I'm really excited right now to go in and see what it actually looks like. Really excited. <laughs> One of the architect's kind of guiding philosophies is that he likes to make houses that make people feel sleepy. So there are essentially no overhead lights in the ceiling or <laughs> in the house. And where there is lighting, it's usually no higher than, than eye level. And it's always using these warmer lights. I'm really, really lucky to have a kind of a courtyard inside the house and the house is kind of built around this and this is designed the way that it is with this low window such that you kind of notice it when you look in and you're like whoa what's that but only a little bit and we'll kind of get to see this later but it's only a hint rather again rather than the the full picture immediately so this entire kind of wing of the house, this is kind of like the, uh, the night space. This is where my bedroom and my wife's bedroom, as well as the kid's bedroom is. And leading down this hallway is this big, long desk, which is kind of lined with this bookshelf here and then up here as well. Going back to lighting, the, uh, another thing that this architect loves, loves to do is to use what's called indirect lighting. It makes it more difficult to look directly at the light source while still providing ample lighting for studying. But if you look across the way right there, that's where the kitchen is. And my wife and I will be able to check on the kids, you know, like when they're studying or call them from dinner for, for dinner or whatever it might be across, across the courtyard like that. And it's, um, it's a really cool kind of feature. The, the guy, the architect, another thing that he really strives for is to not create houses in which it's easy to get away from the other family members. He said that it's common for teens to have, a, of course, that rebellious phase. And if you give them um, a really kind of easy way out to escape from the, you know, the other members of the house, they often do. And avoid and avoid people, but in putting the desk here, <laughs> they they can't really run away unless they want to like study on the floor. Although I do that sometimes, so I guess that that is an option. And then over here, this is going to be the master bedroom, <laughs> which is funny because it's it's smaller than the kids' bedroom. But uh, this is it. Having a house in Japan again, it gets extremely hot during the summer here, and you absolutely need air conditioners. Now in a slightly larger house, that means you have to get like maybe between four, five, six, seven air conditioners, depending on, again, like the number of rooms and that kind of thing. And the architect said, we could do that. We could put a, sin a single individual air conditioner in each room. But one of the things that I've been meaning to do with uh, this, this new company that we ended up building with is try a central air heating system. And it really adds to the, what would you say, the unconscious feel of minimalism <laughs> that you get when you walk through the house. So now we're gonna go check out kind of the kitchen, family room, living room area of the house. Now I don't cook at all, but my wife is an incredible cook and in that sense, um, the kitchen was a very important uh, detail. My wife is constantly, constantly, constantly cooking. So she's often working the entire day in the kitchen. She's very conscious about like kind of nutrition and that kind of thing. And so we were very particular. She was very particular about the kitchen. And again, because she's working in the kitchen for so long, one of the things, the things that she didn't like about the current kitchen is that it's got the low kitchen hood that um, sucks up the hot air. And one of the things that she, she asked the architect was, is there any way we could make like an alternative solution that would get like the, the fumes out of the house? Now, in the States, they have those, well, in the States and in other uh, places, it's fairly common these days to have like a, a little thing here that's recessed that was a potential option, but it was too expensive. So the architect actually came up with this other solution where the hot air goes up through here, and then there's a high power fan 
up in here that spits it outside of the house. And it's like, this is where the refrigerator will go. And I believe that this is like, not like the standard refrigerator size, but it's like this area was built to be the, the size of our current refrigerator. And it, that's kind of one of the standard refrigerator sizes in Japan. Earlier, <laughs> I was talking about how you can only get a glimpse of the courtyard um, through that window down there. And again, that window is intentionally small, such that when you walk over here, you can kind of, as you can see, the ceiling is still a little bit small or low down here, but then it opens up over here. And at the same time, kind of not same time, but around the same area that it opens up, we also have this giant window right here. And this is the only way to get into the courtyard from the inside of the house. And um, the other really cool thing about this is that this entire thing <clears throat> goes into this wall here. It's all behind this like single uh, part of the wall here, but now we've got this big open area right here. And this looks amazing at night. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh. You know, you know, you can get some stars up there, and it's a little cloudy today. But... Yeah, it's raining a little bit right now, but um, yeah, like, oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> oh wow, and yeah, I mean, I how and this, what what this is, this isn't a, a, a proper engawa because what an engawa is in Japan, it's like a lot of Japanese houses have like these long kind of what thing something that looks like this and what this is meant for is that it, it gives a way for a person that owns the house to interact with a guest without um, the guest actually coming into the house so by having a fair amount of surface area that's kind of like in between the inside and outside of the house that's still you know covered underneath the roof you can like you know have like a, a cup of tea with someone but if you're if the inside of your house is like super messy and you don't want to necessarily have a guest inside right now you can just kind of do it in this kind of like pseudo inside part of the house where it's like half inside half outside and that's that's traditional japanese architecture again it's called an engawa now ours isn't a true engawa because it's enclosed by the, the walls of the house but it's that's where this uh design kind of language comes from so <laughs> there you go. How do you block out the light then for these, these giant windows? And again, they've taken the traditional Japanese approach of paper doors that are also within these walls. So pull this over here and you've got another one. And it's so cool how it's all hidden. It's uh, when it, this was like kind of the feature of the model house They've got the same exact uh, wooden mokuzai sashi, and then also it collapses into the wall like it does here in that model house. And then they also have these uh, shoji, these uh, paper doors. And when I saw that, it blew my mind. I was like, that is the coolest thing I have ever seen. And it was kind of like the tipping thing, uh, the, what would you say, deciding factor. I was like, I want, if I'm going to make a house, it has to be with this company. That's like, the most beautiful, coolest thing I've, I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> so cool. And of course, like unlike a curtain, there's no place for, for dust to collect. Those just go into the walls and look up at the ceiling right now. This is the brightest the, this area of the house will ever be. I can look directly at this light right now and it's not, it doesn't hurt my eyes or anything like this. This is a very soft kind of light right now. And again, it's like this such that you can't make it any brighter than this. And in that sense, again, you get sleepy at night naturally because rather than having, again, these big bright LED lights on the ceiling that just like light up the, the entire space, it's like there's a little bit of soft light here there's a little bit of soft light here, and there are no other lights in this entire big area. All the other light that comes in is from the sun 
As a result of that, this is a very bright area during the day, but a very dim area at night. And again, it makes you sleep. I'm sleepy right now. I just like standing <laughs> here. This is a fixed window. This can't be open, but this also has the paper doors. And the other cool thing about this one in particular is that these are what are called yukimi shoji. And these are unique in the sense that this panel comes up where you can allow... Snow is kind of a beautiful thing. And this allows people to look out and see like snow in the winter when it, when it snows. The architect is constantly thinking, you know, this is the norm, but is there a different approach to this? One of the things that you guys didn't realize wasn't present, wasn't there when we were in the, the kids' bedroom and my bedroom is those rooms don't have closets. There's one family closet and that's exactly what this is. And the reason that he loves this approach so much is because it allows you to do what I'm, what I'm about to show you guys, which is this is where the laundry machine is. The, or where the laundry machine will go in the future. And rather than having to take your, your, your laundry and walk it all the way, all the way across the house and maybe do like two or three trips when you have a family, you know, because that's a lot of clothes, you can just pick it up here, put it here, and then one by one, hang it up. So it, again, it's like this fundamentally different approach. We're used to having, you know, at least some closet space in every bedroom in, in, in the typical house, but this doesn't have that because it's gone with this completely different approach. There was one thing that I insisted on having and that's what, what this is. I said, I want a pull up bar <laughs> because I used to do martial arts tricking, which Norm also used to do. And I used to be really into working out and I haven't been working out enough properly recently. And unless you buy one of these like pull up um, like frames that take up like half of an entire room for like a sturdy one, you can't really have them in Japan. And because like the, the door, the door mm. frames can't really accept those, like what would you say, door frame um, pull-up bars that you can use in the States quite commonly. But this again, because we were able to think about this from, from day one, it's just, it's right here. And if I wake up, you know, work up a sweat, I go from here into the, you know, the shower area, which is right over there. And we're, we're gonna see that in a second. And there's a ladder here. You're probably wondering what this is. And there's just kind of a, uh, a storage space up there. This is kind of like the highlight feature of the house. I know that this is like an incredible house so far um, and it, it is and I couldn't be happier with it. But this is what makes this house truly special. Beppu is kind of the onsen capital, onsen meaning hot springs of Japan. It has the, higher con the highest concentration of hot springs of any city in Japan. And because this house is in Beppu, we went with that. There's a second miniature, this is called a, a tsuboniwa. Kind of means like small mini courtyard here as well. And it opens up, that's, there's no roof right there. So this tree kind of goes up and extends into the sky. All my YouTube buddies, they all live in Tokyo. And it's kind of prohibitively expensive to come out to Beppu because not only do you have to pay for a plane ticket, which is expensive by itself, but you also have to pay for the hotel fees. And so I was like, one of the things that I really, really wanted and specifically for work is a guest room that my YouTube buddies could come to and stay in. So we haven't moved into the, the place yet. And in that sense, uh, Norm isn't staying here tonight but there's gonna be dozens and dozens and dozens of times in the future when my friends will come and they've got this entire room all to themselves. There's a second bathroom up here that, again, my buddy Norm here can use when he, when he visits. <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about walking across the house in his, in his pajamas and, you know, waking someone up. It's like he's got his own toilet up here. He can stay up as late as he wants and not have to worry about waking anybody up. Okay, so that is the uh, house tour. I hope that you guys uh, have enjoyed it as much as I'm 
currently enjoying it. <laughs> I mean, again, it's, it's a dream come true. And thank you, Norm, for coming out and helping me like document this whole process and making a, an incredible memory out of this whole experience. In addition Honestly, to the house itself. <laughs> it's so, so worth it. We've been working on like documenting this for what, over half a year now? More than half a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a long, long, long time.